to worship on this day, this second Sunday in Lent, this last day of February, and on Bold Women's Sunday. I like that I get to be here leading worship and preaching on this Sunday of celebration. A thank you to Lindsay Ansbacker, who is here leading us in music together with uh, Scott Fredericks. Uh, just a couple of announcements to highlight. I remind you that you can download the bulletin uh, and read it, and especially as you see um, important announcements. Uh, but we continue our midweek worship opportunity that is online, and that is uh, posted by six o'clock on Wednesdays, and we are uh, having more of a Bible study where we are studying the Gospel of Mark. So this coming Wednesday on March 3rd, uh, we will see how the story continues and how the plot thickens. Now, on Wednesday, as you're watching this, even if it's after six o'clock, close to seven, and you think you would like to join the Zoom discussion, go ahead and email me because uh, I will make sure you get the link. You can also email um, info at St. Matt Lutheran, uh, who will also, Jane will get you the link as well. We have uh, met as a task force and as a church council, and we will begin having indoor worship on Saturday at five o'clock and on Sunday at 1045. Uh, this will begin March 20th and 21st, and we will be uh, following the guidelines with social distancing. We will continue to wear masks, but we do look forward to those opportunities to worship uh, in this place. Um, and we will also be continuing our drive-in worship at nine o'clock. Uh, and we will continue that through the spring and summer as an opportunity for worship. This coming Tuesday, uh, Discovery Place, our preschool, will be having an open house. Uh, and if you know of any preschoolers that you think would um, enjoy this opportunity for learning and for growing, uh, be sure to check that out as well. Let us now continue our worship with the confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, and we'll take a few moments for silent prayer. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And now hear these wonderful words of absolution. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. 
as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our worship as we sing together our opening hymn, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue as we sing our Kyrie. Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from Genesis chapter 17. You may begin to notice the theme throughout the whole season of Lent from these Old Testament readings is that we continue to be reminded of God's covenant with the people of Israel, that covenant that now is extended to all the world through Jesus Christ. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. 
No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for your wife, Sarai, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her. And moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she shall give rise to the nations. Kings of people shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In this gospel reading, I want to point out that this happens directly following the story about Peter when he confesses Jesus as the Messiah. He gives the right answer, but now as we read the next part, we find out that Peter is not ready to understand what this truly means. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm beginning my sermon with a story. This is a different kind of sermon today. It is about nightgowns. Now hang in there with me because I think it will help you recognize the paradox of a well-lived life. A tale of two nightgowns. It was the best of times and not the worst of times when Grandma B opened up her Christmas present she had her whole family around her watching to see her expression when she saw what it was. A nightgown. A soft, beautiful, blue flannel nightgown whose front was decorated with embroidered designs that brought out the soft yellow flowers imprinted on the flannel. Oh, she exclaimed, my favorite color. And who knew that I loved yellow flowers? She tore open the packaging and held it up in front of her. Stand up, Grandma B, her grandchildren said. We want to see how it fits. She stood up and held it up to her neck and said, it's just 
right. The cameras clicked, her smile radiant. I'm wearing this tonight, she said, and indeed she did, nearly every night. And to be honest, this nightgown was so comfortable. She sometimes wore it in the morning, especially those winter mornings when she had no place to go but to be home and hang out with the cat. This nightgown accumulated some stains. She dropped a hunk of grape jelly on it once when she was eating toast, toast crumbs and cat hair also stuck to the gown. There was the soda that sprayed on her when she played cards and ate snacks with her grandsons. Body lotion got on it when it squirted out of the bottle as she clumsily tried to put it on her arms and legs. There was ketchup on it too. That was the time she didn't feel like getting dressed for lunch. For old time's sake, she had hot dogs and macaroni and cheese, remembering when she had a table full of kids eating their favorite food. But it seemed that the more she wore it, the more she loved this nightgown. The flannel grew thinner as one year went into the next. It reflected her own life as she grew older and weaker and thinner and less sturdy on her feet. Nevertheless, the nightgown held up pretty well for the hundreds of times it was washed. She had to sew up the hem a couple of different times. And later on, her granddaughter sewed up some loose threads. It was not the best of times and possibly the worst of times when this nightgown was packed into the suitcase for Grandma B as she moved from her home into a place with more assistance. Her son, when he helped her settle in, made sure that she had her nightgown, the same one, blue with yellow flowers, only now they were faded to a pale yellowish ivory. As the family came to visit her day to day, they counted on seeing this nightgown. By this time, her caregivers knew that it was best to have a quick turnaround when it was time to wash it. You probably figured out how this story ends. Her family was gathered around her in the early morning hours. They were summoned by the staff and were told that it would not be long. Laying on the bed, ever so still, she was wrapped in this nightgown. It was much too big for her now. In the hours before her death, the family sat in a circle around her bed. Taking turns, they would each lean over and talk to Grandma B, her nightgown now soaking up the tears as they said goodbye. They also shared memories of Grandma B, the time she played cards or when she watched Wheel of Fortune each day or how she would go feed the birds, even though she wasn't supposed to go down the back stairs. They remembered how she would hold them in her lap, patting their back and staying there, saying there, there. Even the big kids had recent memories of this, although when they sat on her lap, they kind of held themselves up not to squish her. It was one of the grandsons who said, you know what? In almost all of my memories, Grandma B is wearing her nightgown. Of course, he only knew her the last years of her life, but they all realized how much that nightgown meant to her and to each of them. It was old and raggedy, and yet it was their grandma, their mother, and friend. That was when they decided what to do with the nightgown after she was gone. It would be cut up into pieces, one for each grandchild to have and to hold as a memory, as a way to picture her, to smell her, and to be comforted by this familiar cloth. Now, as you remember, my story is about two nightgowns. 
And it was also the best of times when this second nightgown was given, same nightgown, same flannel, same colors, same embroidery, same everything, only this time it was Grandma M who opened the package. And it was her family who sat around her waiting to see her expression as she opened the gift. I love it, she said. It is my favorite color and I just love these yellow flowers. She held the package in her lap and oohed and awed for it, over it for a while. Before not too long, the family went on to the next gifts to open. Somewhere in there, the nightgown was set aside. You probably know where I'm going with this story. When it came time to put her gifts away, she tenderly put the nightgown still in its original packaging. She put it in the bottom drawer of her bureau. She would wear it, she thought, but she wanted to wait for a special occasion. But to wear it now, she was afraid to get it dirty. Now, to be honest, I don't know if she even knew what kind of special occasion it would be that she would take the nightgown and wear it. That nightgown was safe and secure and did not get dirty, nor did it get thin from wear. It stayed dust-free and looked brand new when Grandma M's granddaughter pulled it out of the drawer. Only now Grandma M's was gone and the family was cleaning the house out and trying to figure out what to do with all of her stuff. Hey mom, the granddaughter said, look here, an unopened nightgown. They didn't recognize it as the gift they gave to her so many years ago. And so it was thrown into the pile for goodwill, stuck in between her other clothes. Here is my question for you. Which nightgown had the better life? Which one was loved more? Which one was appreciated more? Which one brought more joy? Funny, isn't it? It's the worn out, stained, flimsy nightgown that in the end was loved and cherished and used. When Jesus spoke to Peter and the disciples, he was not talking about flannel nightgowns, but he was talking about this paradox of a well-lived life, for it is the life that is truly lived, not protected, but used for others, not kept to itself, but a way of being that dares to be exposed to the elements and to take a chance on others. Life that looks very different at the end of life than at the beginning. Here's the thing. Jesus was on his way to the cross to be, as he said, rejected and killed and to rise again. When it comes to taking up the cross of Jesus and follow him, it means heading into the bumps and bruises and the unknowns. Yes, it means getting dirty and stained and maybe even used up. And it means that the well-lived life is not one that stays packaged and protected and held secure in some place, for that's no life at all. It is merely an existence. Here's what I'm learning about St. Matthew and its history. I'm learning that our forebearers took chances all the time for the sake of the gospel. Promised money that they didn't yet have, bought property for what was to come, giving, 
with the future in mind. Here is the paradox. The more one gives, the more one receives. The more one's hand lets go, the more this hand takes hold. It's taking chances on life and others. And can you imagine what would happen if all of us would take this chance for the sake of the gospel to forfeit our own preservation for the sake of others? To keep hold is to be taken from, but to give is to receive. For you and I to take up the cross to follow Jesus into our future. Imagine the difference that makes for Hanover, for this country, for our world. In the week to come, I'm asking you to consider what Christ is calling you to be and what to do. Specifically for others as a way of giving yourself away and at the very same time as a witness to Jesus Christ. It is the paradox of a well-lived life. It's a call to discipleship. It's a promise, really, of a well-lived life. For as we live, we die. And as we die, we live. It's the way of the cross, and it's the way to life, abundant, eternal, and well-lived. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Thank you again to Lindsay for the beautiful musical offering for this day of worship. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all who believe in your goodness that we may follow you wherever you lead and rejoice in your holy promises. Give strength and comfort to those who suffer for the faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Grant wisdom and courage to all elected leaders to do what is right and good for the betterment of the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to the whole world the depth of your love shown on the cross. Be with all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving, especially Faye, Cooper, Tammy, those on our prayer list, our homebound, and all others we name before you with our lips or in our hearts. We ask your blessing to pee upon Carol, Sally and Ben, as you receive them into your loving embrace, give hope and peace to their families and loved ones. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, foster parents, and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We await the day of Christ's coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you, that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. And now we join together as we sing our closing hymn. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.